Hey guys, I'm John P. On today's episode, all the updates about our production studio. Welcome to Geek Beat. This episode of Geek Beat is brought to you by lynda.com. Okay, it's been a while since we've done any behind the scenes stuff for you guys. And uh, we've had a lot of questions about our big psych wall. And so I thought, you know what? Let's make today's episode a behind the scenes update so you guys can see a bunch of what I think is really cool stuff. Hopefully you don't find it boring. If you like it or if you don't like it, tweet me and let me know. That way I know whether or not we should do more things like this. Okay, having said that, for those of you who are not aware, we built this monstrous psych wall. This is called a cyclorama. Um, it is also called an infinity wall. What it is, is a big 25 foot by 25 foot wall that's 12 feet tall. And you will notice, or you won't notice, that if you uh, look over here, there are no corners. So when you're looking at this on video, you really, except for the shadow of my hand, you shouldn't be able to perceive that there's really anything there. That's because it's curved right into the floor. And the reason why the wall is built like that is so that you can do scenes like in the Matrix. You remember that scene where Neo's like plugged in and he's like leaning back and they beam him into this room and it's all white and then they fly in all of these racks of stuff like guns and things he's gonna do training. That was shot on a cyclorama. And if you look, we're, we've got a camera back here that we're gonna be shooting uh, all kinds of shows, including the Earth 911 show, we'll be shooting on it. And when you look through that camera at me, and when I'm properly lit and the wall is properly lit behind me, it just kind of looks like I'm floating in a white space. And you'll see more of that when you check out those Earth 911 shows and a few other things we'll be doing. So let's talk about how this is actually accomplished. First of all, you do have to build this gigantic wall, which was a pain in the butt. It literally took us like two months to construct the wall because it had to be built, then we had to get the uh, curvature in there, and then it had to be painted and painted and painted. It took forever to paint it. In fact, if you look at the flooring, you see we have a lot of painter uh, protection stuff here on the floor. Uh, that's so that David and Carter and I don't put our footprints all over it, because every time we have to paint this floor, just the floor, it's about $1,000. We painted it with a two-part epoxy so that we can easily clean it with like cleaning materials or with a mop or something like that. Although the wall is actually painted with a flat paint so that uh, it doesn't uh, reflect too much light. Now, uh, what we've done is we've, we've got a, about six lights from Altman Lighting. You can see these lights up here. They're very special lights for a psych wall. They're, they have a special curvature to them. And the reason why is because at the top of the wall, since the light is closest to the top of the wall, if, if it was a, a normal light, it would be very bright up there, and then it would be dimmer as it comes down the wall. But you notice it's fairly evenly lit all the way down because it has a curved kind of lens in front of it. These lights are very expensive. They were well over $1,000 each light, like $1,500 or more per light. Um, these are the 100 watt versions, and we are just starting to get them dialed in. In fact, what you'll notice is this light is mounted on a pole hanging off of our trussing. This is a temporary solution because we're gonna be getting a, a, a different type of a bar that will hold, uh, will come out. It's gonna be a ladder type situation. There's two bars and it's got the crisscross pattern that our trussing has for support and stability. Because it turns out we need to back these lights up further from the wall so that there's a very even looking uh, dispersion. Now, I don't know if you can really see this from where you're at, but if we stand here and we look at this wall, because these three lights are fairly far back, this wall looks very, very evenly lit, which is exactly what we want. But if we look at this wall, because unfortunately, this light is back a couple of feet, but those are connected directly to the truss on the outside. And so if you look right up here, you see a definitive hot spot and a really hard line on the wall. And so it's really hot 
and then it kind of blends together down here. We want to avoid all those hot spots. Also, in the corner right now we have a problem because the way these two lights are kind of overlapping, you see that it's super bright right in here and then there's a drop off. None of this can happen on a properly lit psych wall, even with a corner. It needs to be very even all the way across the corner and on the floor as well. So we are trying to dial all of that in with all of these lights. So we have six of these special Altman psych wall lights. And then we also have our brand new Manfrotto lights, which I was just uh, unboxed the other day for you guys. And they're up here. It's probably hard when you look uh, straight at them, but there's one right here which would be behind the speaker. This is known as a hair light. So you'll notice that what's happening is it's coming down and it should be shining light right on my shoulders and kind of giving me a little bit of a halo effect around the top of my head. And it might not sound like a big deal, but backlighting is very important because it helps the person who's in frame stand out uh, as, as opposed to the background. We also have three front lights. Now this may change, it's subject to change, but you'll see that we've got one, two on the left and right and one up in the center. And the one in the center is actually pointing down. In fact, right now, uh, David's getting a wide, wide shot. It's pointing right at Carter. It would be pointing at the floor. And with our white floor, with a person standing here, it's going to bounce and give some fill light up under the face so that there's less shadow this way. You wouldn't think there's so much that goes into this lighting. But this is what we are doing when we're not making content. We're preparing to make content. We're setting the stage. Okay, now, you may say to yourself, that truss is pretty high up there. Uh, what do you have to do, get on these ladders to get these lights? Well, we do. We can get on them. So we have a really cool um, uh, mobile platform here, which is very stable. I love these things. And this gets us high enough that we can actually get up and work on that. But you could imagine right now there's like 10, 12 lights hanging in the ceiling. We don't want to be getting up and moving it and rolling it all over our thousand dollar paint job and everything else. So we engineered a solution for that. Uh, what we did was we hung our rig on a mobile platform. So we've got four electric hoists up in the ceiling and our electrician Keith brought them back here and uh, powered them up with this particular custom made box. So what we have are four different uh, motors, one, two, three, and four, but we obviously want them all coming and going at the same time. So we can raise or lower them. These switches control the four motors and there's a downward position, a center off position, and an upward position. They correspond to going up, down, and not going anywhere. So what we'll do is we're gonna put all four of these down, and then this is the power. When I flip this, the whole truss is going to go down. So here we go. So that allows us to bring it all the way, we can actually take it all the way down to the floor so that we can reach everything and work on it. So I love that. Let's keep going, uh, but I want to show you one other thing too because one of the things we discovered, at first we thought, hey, you know what, this would be a really good idea to put the entire thing in motion. What we didn't think about was everything on this rig is powered by electricity. Well, how do you get electricity to go up and down with the thing? That's very, it seems like a big problem at the time. But then we found these white high current power adapters, and I've got some over here. So we're in the process of getting these things rigged up. And what we've done is we've used these heavy, heavy duty uh, power cables and we have, it's got a hook on one end so that when we plug this in behind the wall, we can hook this in place so that you can pull on this and it's not gonna pull out of the plug. And then this end we put on the truss so that as the truss goes up and down, our power is also in motion with the truss. That was our creative little solution. Now what we also did was on the back of our psych wall, we have a four light switch panel. And what we're able to do is each one of these will be plugged into a different outlet, each corresponding to its own light switch. So we can either use DMX controls, which, uh, come over here. This is a DMX controller right here. 
This is a DMX controller that Monoprice sent us, and actually it's fantastic. We really like it. What it allows us to do is it allows us to bring the uh, cut. We can do all kinds of things. If you watch the psych wall here, we can change the color of the psych wall, and we can, we can uh, bring the power and the lighting up and down, etc., uh, which is really cool. Or, so we can control them with a DMX controller like that, or we can flip a light switch and turn the whole thing off. So that's really nice. Um, by the way, you know, there is a lot. I'm trying to give you guys as much knowledge as I can really fast, but it takes a long time. You know, you just have to learn through trial and error and experience. Or you can head over to lynda.com forward slash geekbeat and you can take all kinds of classes on photography, videography, Photoshop, video editing, and even more things like business and engineering and math and everything else. So, uh, keep that in mind, and if you head over to lynda.com forward slash geekbeat, you get a week for free, so keep that in mind. All right, uh, one of the other issues, we have problems with lighting. We also have problems with sound. In fact, right now, with me walking around, I'm wearing a little tiny wireless microphone here, and uh, you may be hearing some echo. That's because we have all these large, flat surfaces for sound to just bounce off of. So what we want to do is find a way to cut that sound down, especially when we're on our set. And I'm going to show you some stuff we're doing on the set here in a minute. But even if we're out here shooting, if I'm standing over here and we're getting all kinds of echo, wouldn't it be nice to have something in front of me that could absorb the sound? Well, that's what we're building right now. In fact, we've got one of them done. We're building two of these. This is a mobile wall that's going to be used for sound baffling. So you can see it rolls very easily. It's made of two by sixes, and it's made of a very high quality piece of three quarter inch uh, plywood. This was the top of the line, like $50 sheet at Lowe's. We cut it down to six feet by four feet, and uh, it's very sturdy. And then we've got this sound foam. And what we're going to be doing is, first we're going to paint it, just because, you know, black would look better than wood. And then what we're going to do is we're going to adhere this sound insulation like this to the board and this whole thing will be covered on both sides. Now, if we put two of these kind of in front of us, let's say flanking either side of a camera while we're talking, all of the sound that's going that's not being captured by the microphone should be absorbed by these things rather than bouncing around all over our walls. So the fact that we have these mobile will really allow us to control the sound. And if you're wondering, well, just how much of a sound difference is it? Let's see. I don't know if the microphone will pick this up, but let me try a little test. Carter, you have to tell me if they can hear this or not. So right now, I'm talking against the wood, and there is no foam insulation. And now I'm talking against the foam insulation. Can you hear the difference? Yeah, it's, different. it's pretty dramatic, right? Yeah. So you can see now why we did that. In fact, we bought a thousand dollars worth of this foam, which we're going to be putting all over the place in here in addition to our mobile walls so that we can really improve the sound quality. We do this for you guys because we want to give you good content, but we also want to do it as professionally as we can so that it's pleasing to watch and listen to and, and all that stuff. And I know it's more pleasing when Callie's on here than me, but hey, you know. All right, so let's talk a little bit about some of the changes that we've been making to the set. First of all, we are going to be working on a, a backdrop for the Geek Beats uh, set for the daily show and the live show. Uh, and that's coming up after we get the sound stuff completed. Then we're going to build our mobile set for in here. But one of the other challenges we have in here is lighting. And so we had this huge stack of all of these LED lights. And um, we were having, uh, it was OK. But it, in some cases, we thought the light was a little too bright or it wasn't quite the right color, and we were kind of mixing and matching some different LEDs, and that's always difficult. So we changed it up, and what we're doing now is we have just two big, super big LED lights on the front. I don't know, Carter, can you, I don't know, it probably, probably completely blows it out here. But what you'll see is they're two one by two foot panels, light panels. And so by doing this, we've actually got a really nice color balance coming at us. And there's four linear feet of light panel coming uh, down on the set. And so now, when we're back here, um, I think 
you can kind of see, this is basically what the camera is going to look like, but I think it looks kind of fairly evenly lit from back here. And uh, so that's what we're trying to achieve. A nice, pleasing look that we don't have to burn our eyes out <laughs> when we're staring at the monitors. We have a lot of other stuff we're doing. We're going to be switching out the, 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 the tripods that we're using for mounting our cameras. We're going to be switching out these monitors because, quite frankly, uh, Callie and I are having a hard time seeing them. For example, here's a chat monitor going on. So when we're sitting back there doing our live show or even when we're recording on The Daily Show, for those of you who don't know it, there's the drop cam. So if you're watching on the Geek Beat drop cams during the daily show, um, that's where you're looking at. And then if you're chatting with us in the live chat, um, this is where we're watching what you're saying to us. And if you don't know how to do that, you can just go to geekbeat.tv forward slash drop cams and geekbeat.tv forward slash live, and that'll get you the drop cams, and then the live gets you the chat room so you can participate with us. And so we have a hard time reading these when we're standing back a little bit, so we're going to be putting bigger monitors all up here and stuff like that. So I don't want to bore you guys to death. Again, like I said, I hope that you enjoy this type of, of behind the scenes content. Let me know if you like it. Seriously, you have to let me know. Tweet me or something. Email me, whatever. Uh, at John Pose or just John at geeky.tv. Let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know if there's more stuff you want to see or if you have questions about how we're doing stuff, what kind of gear we're using or anything at all. And. Uh, We'll do some more of this kind of content for you. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave questions below, tweet me, email me, etc. I gotta get back to working on this stuff. So thanks guys, thumbs up on YouTube. I'll see you later. On today's holiday gift guide, we're giving you all kinds of ideas for what to give. 16 cameras going in. That's right insane. Now. 16. At the moment, and we're talking about maybe adding using more. here on the Geek Beat set with these new bad boys from Manfrotto.